think I'm most excited about uh, creating a space that could own the tensions in this work, uh, the tensions within the, the framework of males of color, that you could have uh, um, people working in black communities and native communities, Latino communities, uh, Asian communities, uh, really here both in coalition but also in problem solving mode to think about how can we work together uh, collectively but also how does our work in our specific community, how can it be improved? And, and so I think uh, you know, I've been most excited of the, the level of honesty and uh, uh, constructive uh, analysis and critique and, and, and progress and, and so you know, I, I don't often find a space where you're to the, where, where there's a set of people who are willing to be honest and transparent but also uh, committed to the hard work it is uh, to move this sort of work forward. Yeah I think with that um, I mean there's always a danger with the males of color frame that, they, that you sort of will erase folks histories will erase the specificity of the work they're doing in terms of the geographic places that they work, in terms of the cultures that they deal with. Um, and so I think it was really refreshing to see a space where folks are willing to grapple with that, to talk about it honestly and openly, but also to move past that um, to thinking differently about the work they're doing. So that was really exciting. The biggest connection, I mean, we've done a lot of work in the males of color space, but a lot of it's been focused on African American folks. And so uh, developing the connections to people like Nane, who's, who's a legend, uh, who's run by Dos Unidos, done work in prisons, um, mostly in California, but really across the country. Uh, and also Albert Pooley, who's sort of a, uh, Mark Anthony Neal called him an OG. He's been in the field forever, uh, working with fathers and with families. And so that was really fun for me to meet those folks that, to me, are sort of giants and legends and, and folks that I look up to in this work. Yeah, for me, it's really been you know, connecting with people in different parts of the country. The place has such a such an important role in in this work, right? Like that, that you know, be it males of color or or Latino male in California, and their experience as a maybe first generation immigrant is different than maybe an immigrant in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, who's also a Latino male, right? And so I think it's just been really interesting in engaging with people who are who live in places that I don't know as well, and that, um, and, and also uh, it, it gives me a better frame and understanding of just how um, both you know, complicated and how many layers are, but also how rich the work is and how rich um, and, and dynamic uh, the people are who are doing the work all over the country. I think the big thing for me was just changing the conversation from making the case to doing the work, right? So it, I mean, we've spent a lot of time and energy and, and folks that are nonprofits, for instance, that are constantly in a fundraising cycle are always like trotting out the statistics, uh, demonstrating um, some of the challenges that, that males of color face. And so it's just, it's we just get stuck in that mode. We get stuck in that mode of, you know, woe is us and, and how bad the plight is. And it's, things are terrible, but, but really moving the ball forward is about changing the conversation from making the case to doing the work. And I, th I think we're, we're hopefully beginning to turn a corner. That's the conversation that we have to have next is how do we do this? And more importantly, how do you outside the silo of your work as an academic or your work as a, a policy advocate, how do you work with other folks to really move the ball forward?